Despite looking much like the old BMW 5 Series Gran Turismo, the new 6 GT is a far more accomplished car. Supposedly mixing the space and tech of a 7 Series with the dynamic grace of a 5 Series, the 6 GT should be the perfect compromise, but in reality it's not as appealing. It feels suitably luxurious, and space in the back is very impressive, but it still feels a little lardy on the road. Its heavy-handed styling and bulky rear end means it's not ideally suited to European tastes, and will remain a bit of a niche offering here. Our choice BMW 630D SE GT The 6 GT badge was brand new for 2017. Despite looking much like the old BMW 5 GT, the new car is actually based on the larger 7 series. BMW has seen huge success from its supposedly niche models especially ones like the X4 and X6 and as a result has chosen to funnel funds at its large executive hatchback. Rather than turn its back on the slow-selling 5 GT, BMW reinvented it as a 6 series variant. Said to offer the space and tech of a 7 series but with the handling prowess of the smaller 5 series, the 6 GT should offer the best of both worlds. In reality, it doesn't quite work. Best executive cars on sale available in just one body steel, even the standard 6 series coupe and convertible will use the 8 series badge in 2018, the 6 GT is a 5 seat executive hatchback with little in the way of direct rivals. BMW may mention models like the Audi A7 and Mercedes CLS, but their sleek shapes offer quite different propositions. The engine lineup is a bit limited, too, with only three options at launch. The entry-level 630i GT gets a four-cylinder turbo petrol motor, while the flagship six-cylinder cars are badged 630d and 640i. We've not driven the most basic model yet, and every car we've tried has been in M Sport spec. An SE is also available. All cars use an 8-speed Sport automatic gearbox, while X-Drive all-wheel drive is optional on the 30D. It's standard on the 40i. Engines, performance, and drive 3.8 The 6 Series GT is more comfort-oriented than the 5 Series, and is less sharp to drive as a result. Engines are strong, however don't be fooled by the 6 Series name The GT is not a coupe with any sort of sporting intent. For starters, the 7 Series platform means that it's notably heavier than a 5 Series, despite the 6 GT being, on average, 115 kilograms lighter than the model it replaces. It's targeted at buyers who are more interested in having a comfortable cruiser than something that's razor sharp in the bends, which is why BMW expects a high proportion of sales to come from the high-end private hire and limousine industry. However, this is still an ultimate driving machine, so the adverts say, and as a result expectations of a decent driving experience are higher. Base cars use the same double wishbone front and multi-link rear suspension as the 5 and 7 series, but the 6 series GT also features air suspension as standard on the rear axle. So far we've only tried models fitted with the adaptive full air suspension system, which give a cosetting ride in comfort or auto mode and are hardly uncomfortable even in sport mode. Noise levels are commendably low in all models, too and the car isn't far off the 7 Series in terms of outright comfort. The only thing to watch is that the larger wheels on M Sport models can upset the 6 GTS ability to deal with sharp potholes. The adaptive suspension also helps keep the body relatively flat and level in the bends, although a 5 Series still has the edge in this regard. BMW can only do so much to disguise the car's curb weight, every variant is over 1.8 tons but it's certainly more agile and composed than a similarly sized SUV. The steering is quite remote, however, meaning this isn't the driver's choice in BMW's range. Engines There's only three engine options offered with the 6 Series Gran Turismo from launch, two petrols and one diesel. The base 630i is a 2.0-liter four-cylinder petrol producing 258 bhp and 400 nm of torque. That's enough to get it from 0 to 62 miles per hour in an impressive 6.3 seconds, helping in no small part by the smooth and fast changes of the ZF sourced 8 speed automatic gearbox. Its performance will be perfectly adequate for most, but when pushed, it becomes a bit coarse and it needs revs to extract the best from a FE. 
The 640i is anything but coarse thanks to its melodious turbocharged six-cylinder engine. It manages 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.2 seconds thanks to 340bhp and 450nm of torque, while the engine is smooth and responsive. It's also available with BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system. MPG, CO2 and running costs 3.5 The BMW 6 GT is a big car, and with big cars come big bills it's best to think of the BMW 6 GT as a hatchback version of the 7 series, because whichever way you look at it, the big bimmer is an expensive car to buy and run. The most fuel-efficient model is the 630 DSE Auto which emits a respectable 129g-km of CO2. Officially, it'll return 57.6 mpg, which is pretty good for such a large car. However, when you look at list prices, the 6 GT starting figure of more than £50,000 means all cars are subject to the government's tax levy for cars over £40,000. That means road tax, or VED stands at £450 every year for the first five years. The petrol 630i and 640i X-Drive models are even more expensive to run, however. The rear-wheel drive 630i SE emits 148g-km and BMW says it'll return 43.4 mpg. The 640i, which is only available with X-Drive all-wheel drive, will struggle to return more than 30 mpg with higher emissions, too. Insurance Group's BMW 6 GT insurance groups are high, ranging from Group 41 to Group 44. That means every version will command high premiums though rivals should be similar. Depreciation residual values for the BMW 6 GT are actually quite good, despite the car's high list prices. All models are expected to retain between 43 and 47 percenter of their value after 3 years and 60,000 miles, with the 630DM Sport posting the most attractive figures. The outgoing Mercedes CLS doesn't perform quite a well, though the new model due in 2018 will no doubt improve on this.